Before we even get into anything, I just have to say that I almost punched my monitor straight into my wall a few minutes ago. This Eastern Conference wildcard race is driving me nuts because I only have one rooting interest in all of this, and I just wanted the Red Wings to miss. And my God, we're like they. This team has the the big. They had the biggest horseshoe up their ass through this entire race. I don't get it. I I was. I always tuned in to like the end of their games throughout this race, and they would always come back. I sat through the entire four to one collapse against the Canadians last night, almost lost it then, and then tonight, tonight they're losing uh, they're losing three to one. Come back from that, then they're down four to three, and there's seven seconds left. And I'm thinking, all right, finally, like they're dead. I can relax. They tie the game with three seconds left. I almost punched my monitor. I was going nuts. And they they won the game. And they won the game. If it weren't on the most ridiculous shot too. If the, the if point. the if the Washington Capitals did not, you know, win in the fashion they did, basically they have the game gift wrapped to them. Oh my god, I oh, that was frustrating. That's hilarious though. It's just like the communication obviously was at some sort of a um I mean it was at, it was within like 30 seconds, you know. It just it's so funny because it like it makes it seem like oh the wings tied it up. And the, obviously the Flyers needed a, a regulation win, so Torch was just like, well, everyone's going down with this ship. Yeah, that was, uh, that was frustrating. But uh, my, the one rooting interest prevailed. Thank God. Yeah. I wore red yeah. in, me- in, in memory tonight of the <laughs> Detroit Red Wings lost season, the season that they were going to go on a deep playoff run. But uh, could you imagine? Capitals had other plans. Could you imagine? Because they just finished with 91 points, the same as the Sabres last year. Could you imagine if the season ended like that last year? Like the heroic put, the, the heroic push goes till the end of the season, and they who they play the last game last year was it Ottawa or was it Columbus? Columbus? It, was no, it was Columbus, and then they they tie the game against Columbus with like three seconds left, and then within a minute you find out that the team above you clinched because they scored on an empty netter in a tie game to win it. To that win. would have been the end of me. Like that would have been yeah. probably the worst moment of the drought. That's bad. I'm sure Red Wings fans are, are super happy with how the season played out, but I feel like they're going to look back on that in a few years, especially if they don't build upon this season and be like, Oh my God, that's how we missed. Well, they have no one else that, I mean, you look at the, the elite season as a whole, it just, it doesn't come down to that. Like they, had a spot locked gift wrapped to them. Every other team that wasn't in a playoff spot did not want the second wild card. And the Wings, they just kept losing games. Yeah. I mean, what? In the most important time of the season. They had a good old Sabres slump in March. Yeah. Just killed them. I'll have the entire summer to uh, dunk on them, I guess. I still have some strong opinions about that roster. In any case, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Sabre Roundtable. My name is Jonah. I'm Christian. And I'm JP. And before we even get into anything, I, I do need to address this. So it's been a little bit since our last episode, um, but it wasn't, spo- it wasn't supposed to be. We recorded the night after the Sabres were eliminated, which I don't even remember which night that was at this point. Um... And the files got corrupted, so I couldn't edit, post, do anything. So it's forever. The, it's the first piece of lost Saber Report media. But I don't know about you guys, but from my memories with that episode, uh, it wasn't a fun one. It was no. it was very negative, and I it was mostly just us rambly. complaining about. It was rambly. We didn't have a docket. We just we didn't really care. I think we mentioned that multiple times during the episode that we just didn't care about the episode. So maybe it was, maybe it was for the best. But we uh, we had a little fun with it. We listed off some stuff that has and hasn't happened. But uh, yeah, was well, I'm not too upset that it was gone. So no, I it was, was. I I tried to get it back for like I tried to get it back for like two hours, and then at that point I was just like, I I do I even care to even try to get this back. So, sorry about the little hiatus, but I don't, I don't think anybody was in a 
raring mood to talk about the team at that point. And honestly, even since until today. And today is the first time where I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. It just, I guess even just mentally, but yeah, I, it, it was, it was a good, good day is the best way to put it much needed. The first one in quite some time. Yeah. And I think I was saying during that episode, you know, obviously we talked a lot about Donnie and if they were actually going to do it. And I think I said, like, I think Kevin Adams has no choice. And I think he had to. And I think that's what it came down to. Like, he had to do it to move this um, organization forward and to make the step, a step in the right direction. So I was more confident that he was going to do it probably than both of you. But I was still surprised when it actually happened. Especially, I mean, it came pretty fast. I mean, it was the last game was literally last night. So um, I don't know. It, it was... It was a good thing to see at work, and I was like, oh, okay. I, You know what? The Sabres rooted me back in. Here we go. Yeah, I, from what I've said previously, I really didn't have any sort of confidence in them moving on from Granado, and especially not as quickly as they did. Um, I thought this would have at least dragged out into the summer and or they just rolled into next season with them again, but... Um, judging by Adam's press conference, there's a sense of urgency in the organization now and the time to talk about pressure and being young that it's, it's over. It's, it's completely over. No more excuses. Next season's about winning. I, I was very surprised that it, I was surprised that it happened. I really was. And I think Part of what makes today so relieving is it's not it's not even the the firing of Granado because that was that was like step one and hey we we didn't even know if that step was gonna happen but I think there was kind of a dark cloud looming over even in a firing of Don Granado and that was the rumors that were starting to to up to pop up about Seth Appert being the one to take the role. And look, we could have, there, there's, a, there's an alternate universe out there where that's the guy that they hire and we spend the summer trying to defend it and look for the positives in it. And, you know, it's not, it wouldn't have been a, an, an exciting move. It just, you would have had to fight for the, the right to support it. You would have had to fight for your own opinion on the topic and it was this kind of dark shadow looming over this potential firing of Granado. And I think what makes today so relieving is that even that got shut down, even everything that Adams went on to say in his presser just made me feel a thousand times better than I guess how I woke up this morning before even reading the news. Yeah, yeah he, he killed that presser. He killed it. I think he addressed everything. He was very honest. I mean, I think everybody, even if you don't agree with his moves, you have to appreciate how he handles the media. Um, and quite frankly, you could say this about both um, Buffalo organizations, same with Brandon Bean. But I mean, he talked to the media for 45 minutes today. 45 minutes. I mean, he could have just come up and said, yeah, this season was a failure. You know, we thought it was the right right thing to move on, been there for 10 minutes and gone off. And no one probably would have would have cared that much. But he stayed on there for 45 minutes, answered every single question. And I, it was just he he answered all my questions. I think he um, encouraged a lot of people with his answers. And I think a lot of people know how much he cares now. Like you could see how frustrated he was and it it showed in all of his answers too. Yeah, if we were going off of like if we were putting this in like playoff seating, this uh press conference would probably be a, almost like a president's trophy winner because uh he knocked it out of the park. Um and I'm not just trying to like throw flowers at him, but like he came in there with a passion. He 
addressed he everyone's questions. He was he, pissed. he was very bitter. He was obviously very upset with the performance of the team as a whole over the entire course of the season. And he was gracious en- enough to give and maybe, you know, maybe he needed permission from Terry or whatever, but he was gracious enough to give Don Granado as many chances as he could in as many of those must win games to get those wins and he couldn't deliver. So at the end of the day, you know, we all saw it and this is the news we wanted to hear. We needed to move on from this guy. And in this press conference, Kevin Adams, he really emphasized with this move that he will do whatever it takes to bring a winner back here. Yeah, so to officially go over uh, what transpired today, the Buffalo Sabres uh, announced that the following members of the coaching staff were relieved of their duties. Head coach Don Granado, assistant coach Jason Christie, and video coordinator Matt Smith. So obviously the biggest takeaway from that, uh, besides the coaches that were let go, are the, the coaches that are sticking around, and that would be that being Matt Ellis and Marty Wilford. Uh, Obviously, Ellis is the one that everybody's talking about, but as we soon came to find out, uh, thanks to Lance Lazowski, uh, he's not going to be running the power play next year. He's going to be put in a different role, so we'll see where the new head coach decides to delegate his his role. And as for Wilford... Chicken Tendy's concession stand. As for Wilford, who knows? I mean, he was in charge of the po- the penalty kill, which was a big big strength of the team this year. And he was also in charge of the defense, which did see improvement. So if there is one coach to sort of keep around, I I guess Wilford doesn't it doesn't really bother me. But obviously the big one, Don Granado and uh Jason Christie and that, that poor video coordinator, you know? I, I'm sure he wasn't expecting that pink slip this morning, but no film's a big part of the game too. So, I mean, Hey man, it's a business, but uh, I don't have anything terrible to say about Don Granado. Honestly, looking back on the, the drought coaches, he's probably looked upon the most favorably um, for obvious reasons. All the other guys, it's not a high, that bar. I, it's not a high bar. <laughs> and also it's like any other guy I'm like, can I even remember like a good, like Housley, the 10 game win streak, but that was like in spite of him, but Don Granado, he developed this team into somewhat of a cohesive unit. I think they just lacked that championship structure that, you know, a playoff team needs and he wasn't able to deliver on that, but the hockey world's a better place with Don Granado around. So I wish him well. Yeah, it, it goes without saying that he, he left the Sabres with uh, some toys that were a lot that are a lot cleaner than when he first came in. I can thank Don Granado for Tage Thompson. I can thank him for Rasmus Dahlin. I can thank him for this version of Alex Tuck. I can thank him for the last two to three years of Jeff Skinner. The guy when he focused on just letting players play to their strengths and just play to the best of their ability, that's where he shines. And I think that's where he's always shined dating back to his time with the U S development program. He's just, he's, he's a good development coach when he focuses on it. I think this was the year where you saw the flaws in his strategic ability and tactically being able to win hockey games but you you saw you also saw the strengths. I mean, you, the, this team scored the third most goals last year. That's not nothing. I don't like when people say he's a bad NHL coach, or, or I hate when people say he's not an NHL coach. And it's like, I don't think he's 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 struggled to show he's a proven winning head coach. But he's an NHL coach. If I'm the San Jose Sharks or the Anaheim Ducks, or even the Chicago Blackhawks. I'm I'm willing to give this guy a phone call. This is the guy you want to coach your young pieces and help take them to the next step. So I'm I'm going to be interested to see if he gets another job. I really am. I I wouldn't be surprised if he takes some time off here. But of all the coaches uh, in the drought, I mean, I guess there's people. I guess I could have seen like Bilesma getting another job. Maybe Phil Housley gets another job after his stint in New York, but. I don't know. I I could definitely see Don Granado 
getting another job. Yeah, hundred percent. So continuing with the, 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 the presser, that's really the meat of the conversation here. Like we were saying, Kevin Adams probably putting on his best press conference probably ever. It was at least, it was the toughest one he was ever faced with. Maybe aside from the Eichel and Reinhardt fallout that was when he had to face the media. But even then there were some good vibes in the organization. They finished that season. Well, this year there's nothing. He had to face the media. He had to own up to a failure of a season. He had to own up to, he just had to fire his head coach and he had to voice his displeasure with the players. And he's, he was not a very happy person today. And I think that you, you needed to see that from him. You needed that response. And I think he just gave you exactly what you wanted. All right. Sorry about that. We seem to have lost JP. I don't know him and his shady technology. He's broken a few mics in his time here. He's always got, we're down uh... to, (laughs) we're down to the two man pot again. That's okay. Running it back. like Hopefully hopefully he comes, if he comes back, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Hopefully we can hear more of his uh, his opinions. And he's always welcome back. This is yeah, an open door. Of course, door. of course. The main takeaways from that presser for me, I mean, number one, Adams putting to bed any root. Well, Adams putting to bed all the talk of Appert being the next guy as head coach. Is he's not he's not going to be. He's looking for uh, experienced NHL coach. He made that very apparent, and. I think for me, that's, that's what, you know, that's going to be the main takeaway. And it's going to be the main takeaway for everyone because nobody wanted Seth Appert. I'm, nobody's yeah. saying, nobody, I'm not even saying he can't even be the future coach of this team, but to address it head on, he's not the coach this team needs right now. The NHL has a cycle of, you know, you have your re, your meet, your old school retread, and then you'll have your, guy with new ideas come in and it's kind of a flip-flop situation if you look at I feel like if you look at a lot of teams like that the Sabres are at the point they had their progressive thinker they, they need a retread they need someone who's been there before someone who yeah for lack of a better uh, lack of a better phrasing he, he just he knows how to win yeah when when, when Adam said that he wasn't going to bring uh in another well, I guess he didn't say he wasn't going to, but when he said he was looking for someone with um, a proven track record, I, and I'm sure most of the fan base collectively had a big sigh of relief there. Um, and I completely agree with you. Not saying that Seth Appert couldn't have worked out in Buffalo. Honestly, it could have it could have worked out great, but you would have, you would not, you wouldn't be able to get fans to buy in at all. You've You've gone through your first time coaches you just had one for three years you had ralph Kruger, who only coached half a season in a lockout 10 years before you hired him almost and then you had phil housley before that so and even adam's coming in he's a first time gm so it's like i think the fan base is just they're looking for some sort of proven track record to show that they could go into the playoffs in the following season and hopefully that coach could take them there. Will that be Lindy Ruff? I don't know. Could it be Craig Berube? Also, I don't know. I don't know what Kevin Adams' mindset is, but it seems from the way he was talking is that he wants to get at it right now and he might already have an idea. Maybe he's trying to poach someone from Carolina. I think I I definitely think he has an idea. I mean, he, he said, he said he has a good idea of, he knows exactly what he wants in a coach, I'm sure his list is two or three people, maybe. Like, I get mm-hmm. the feeling he wants to get this done quick. And I know, like, preferably there's a long coaching search. But at the same time, if the coach has his guy and, you know, it, you, know you don't want this to almost drag too long because knowing who your head coach is, that, that influences a lot of things, primarily mm-hmm. – free agent acquisitions. They want to know who they're going to play under. They want to know, hey, have I played under this coach before? Did I like him? What have I heard about him? The Sabres drag out, you know, let's say in a hypothetical scenario, they're waiting on 
Brindamore or Sullivan to somehow shake loose, and that drags all the way until free agency, that's that's they're going to be behind the eight ball. So, and especially considering those two, given how the Penguins push to the end here, I wouldn't be surprised if Sullivan sticks around. And mm-hmm. I don't think Brendan Moore is going to leave Carolina. I would be very surprised. I, I would also be very surprised about that. I mean, I know him and Adams have played together in the past, but um, I don't know. He's, he's had a lot of quote unquote success in Carolina. No, no hardware to show for it as a coach, but he's consistently gotten that team into a solid top seeding playoff position each out of the last, what, going back to 20... Every year, I mean, what, 20, was, 19, first, yeah. When was his first season? Was 2019, it, I think. 18, 19, right after they traded Skinner. So a good five, six seasons now. They've been yeah. top of yeah, the class year in and year out. Yeah, he's a good coach. So honestly, if, if I was a betting man, I would say that with the sense of Adam's urgency and knowing that they'd have to wait until at least July 1st to get a look at either Sullivan or Brindamore. Um, I'm going to put my money on one of either a Lindy Ruff, B Bruce Boudreau or C Craig Berube. Those are my three that, I mean, if any of, if either of them are hired, I'd be fine with it. Um, but those are also probably the ones that I'd be most confident in saying could be behind the bench next year. Do we, do we address the elephant in the room? Like it's like, I feel like I'm sitting here tonight and look, this is based off of no Intel, no nothing. We have no idea who he's talking to. Is it going to be Lindy? Like, I feel <laughs> If I had to pick one of the three to be the most confident in, it'd probably be because him. like here's the thing, and I I struggle. To, maybe I went into it last episode. I think I might have gone into it last episode, and I almost tweeted out a thread of it. But like, it just makes so much sense when you step back. Like, first of all, Lindy Ruff. Like, if his name isn't Lindy Ruff, let's say he's, uh, I don't know, just he's Joe Schmo, and he's been he's top five in let's just look at his resume he's top five and coach and wins all time for head coaches all time he's coached multiple teams through multiple different eras and had success with all of those teams he just got fired from a team that is very much built like the sabers in the new jersey devils who just had their best season in franchise history, regular season in franchise history a year ago. He coached that team. And now he's sitting here on the market. He's 65 years old. So I think he's got one he's got one more tenure in him. Not the, to compare him to Bruce Boudreaux. Like Bruce Boudreaux's 70. He's got another five years on Lindy Ruff. That mm. five years, that's a whole coaching tenure. Ruff, I think, has one more stop before he maybe he looks maybe he retires maybe he looks to go upstairs in management i don't know but i think he's already like the perfect candidate and yeah. then you I take guess... then you take into account the nostalgia factor it's yeah, an easy there. pr yeah. move he probably he would probably love to come back and coach he's 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 said it previously now that was before they hired a soccer chairman over him but he said it previously and look, you want to talk about getting fans back in? It's Lindy Ruff, and I'm just talking about like just like more, you know, not, not people like us who talk about the team once a week. Uh, there's people that just like the team, follow the team, remember remember Lindy Ruff, and like, hey, that's awesome. And look, I don't think there's really any coach because we talk about like selling tickets. I don't think there's really like you're not going to a hockey game to, to to watch a coach, but Lindy Ruff, you know, nostalgia factor, like that's probably the one guy you could get some ticket revenue off of. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I just feel like all of that. He it just kind of feels like he checks all the boxes, and I don't like the idea of a nostalgia run either. It's just Lindy just makes a ton of sense besides the nostalgia factor. It is it is interesting. I I have heard of like a faction of fans make the 
argument against the nostalgia factor and just be like, we can't keep doing the retreads. We've tried it before. It's like, we need to go out there and get someone else. I'm like, why? Like in my head, I'm like, why? It's like, like the, the point you just made, if this guy's name was Craig Barube, you'd be wanting him in, in the door tomorrow with the track record he has. So what? He coached the Sabres in the past. People make the argument like, oh, they never got him. His teams in, in Buffalo never got over the hump. All right, this is a completely different team. Other people will say it's stuff along the lines of, oh, that year last year in, in – uh, De- not Detroit. That year last year in New Jersey was kind of a fluke because the assistant coach, who's now the head coach in Nashville, whatever his name is, Brunette. Um, Brunette, he implemented the system, and that's why they were so I good. See, like, like Brunette's a great coach. He is. It's he's showing it in Nashville. The guys, he's 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 like who you wanted Granado to be, but guys, he's he was Lindy Ruff was still the head coach. Like, right. I've never heard of a team that. The assistant coach decides the system. I'm not saying he didn't help. I'm not saying he wasn't a huge help. But, look, all I know is that Lindy Ruff's Devils this year, from the start of the season to the day he got fired, they were top 10 in expected goal share. Top 10. Yeah, the goaltending just bottomed out on him. Like, yeah. bad. And, look, that's one of the criticisms you'll find with Lindy Ruff. Bad goaltending just kind of follows him around. And it's other than his time with Hashik and Miller – He's just he's he struggled to have great goaltending and to a point, you know, it'll make you wonder, like, hey, is it on his defensive system? Because his teams have never been defensive, you know, they haven't been shut down teams aside from his time with the Hashik Sabres. There's there's flaws to him. I, if you ask me right now, if they hire him, is he gonna win is he the coach to take him to the Stanley Cup? Probably not. I I don't know. But Who knows? Who, who cares? Who knows? Just get Get them to the playoffs. Yeah. Get them there. That's all we want right now as fans. You're at the point. He just, whoever you hire, and this goes past Lindy Ruff, it it, it goes without saying how much they just need to get there. Just reestablish that you're you're a quality NHL franchise. End this 13-year drought. Yeah, it, it'll be it'd be a huge weight lifted off of this franchise and this fan base just to get him into the playoffs one year, and after that, that year when they get into the playoffs, hopefully next year, hopefully next year, that's like that's the mo- that's house money on house money right there. It's like I don't care. Like you get you lose four one in the first round. We got there. That's all we cared about. You took that next step. That's what we were hoping for this season, and we just. It didn't happen, and it sh- it should have, because the way the standings fell, a team with a minus thirty seven goal differential I need to see is sitting the, in the second wild card I need to, right on, now. On. I need to see NHL standings. I need minus thirty seven. The different, like the difference between wild one, wild card one, and wild card two. The Tampa Bay Lightning and the Washington Capitals. The Tampa Bay Lightning have a. Tw- Plus 21 goal differential. The Capitals have a minus 37. That's 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 58 goal. That's a 58 goal difference. Like it's it's an embarrassment that you did not get in this year and that you weren't even a factor. You weren't even a factor. Nobody sure, you, wanted you got, it. You got close at like a few points. A few points you got you oh you got close. But they couldn't win the big game. John Tor- like imagine saying the John Tortorella Flyers the season that they were going to beat you by three points. Imagine telling yourself the Red Ugh. Wings were going to finish with seven more points. The Red Wings were kind of this year's last year's Sabers. Like you know, made it interesting to the end. Kinda didn't really deserve to get in, but they were just stringing wins together at the end. But um. It's hey, it's not about how you get there. It's about getting there. So, I mean, it sucks for them. I feel for them, but also I don't have a lot of empathy to give out because I'm a Sabres fan and I don't know what it's like to be close. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I'll stop the rough talk for for now. I think, you know, given the off season we have ahead, I think we can spend a lot more time on specific coaches. I mean, hey, maybe this gets wrapped up by the end of the week. Who knows? But 
I, I think, hope that'd be fun. Eh, it would be fun, but we got a long off season. We we, get, we at least uh, have a long. We have a long next few months with the playoffs uh, until the draft uh, in late June. So uh, um, uh, off season talk again. God, so we'll, I feel like we were just here. Dude, this season flew by. I did. It, it both it, for as flew bad by and like it was, it was so slow. Dude, for as bad of a season it was, it did go by too quick. And now I'm sitting here. I'm like, we're back at the same spot we were last off season. It just better be an active off season because last year, you know, I think last season it was just last off season. It was just way too quiet, and that's what made it drag on so long. So if there's some big moves scattered here and there, and we get some news, and you know, this roster's looking, this roster's probably gonna look other than the core guys. This roster could look pretty different going into next season and i expect it to and i'm mm-hmm. sure kevin adams expects it to as well so yeah yeah i think just closing thoughts on the the press conference i think it's notable he talked about he's he's sick of this team being called a young team uh he doesn't you know, he doesn't want to hear that anymore he thinks they're at the stage where they're craving accountability and structure uh he wants this team to have a home ice advantage for once, which has not hap- happened in God knows how long. And Forever. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he just, his, his message to the players is just that the time is now, as he put it. Like, there's no more, there's no more excuses. He said at the beginning of the season, the window was open, and that window slammed shut for this year. It was not he, he the press conference was of a of a man who was very upset and you know he he's he's you know he's he's killed a lot of my concerns for now i think mm-hmm. um you know he was criticized you know he doesn't make that big trade he 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 hasn't made that big move he made the byram trade big move he People were saying he's, you know, myself included. Oh, he's going to be held back by the Granado extension. He fired Granado. He was asked if, you know, Pagula, you know, if there was any restrictions on who he could go after. According to Kevin Adams, he has whatever resources he desires. And apparently, it's always been that way. I don't know if I believe that part. Mm-hmm. But nah, okay. that's been that's his message. So, my takeaway: I feel a lot better than I did when I woke up this morning. I think Kevin Adams has given me hope for the summer. Completely agreed. So, before we, because I have a little game plan for us that we were talking about before we recorded this episode. Final thoughts on this season as a whole. We we really haven't talked about the team. They finished on a pretty good note. Uh, They beat the Capitals at home. And uh, what they lost to the Panthers in overtime. And then they beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, final game of the season. So they finished over 500, only the third time for that to happen in the drought. Uh, The only other teams to do that were the 11-12 Sabres and then 22-23 Sabres. Oh, it's such a sad statistic. And we've talked plenty about this team, Jonah. Don't, Don't get me wrong. We've talked plenty about this team over the course of the season. But... um. If I had to rank it, um, this, yeah. If you could it's, like, it sounds... if you could like rank these these seasons, and look, I'm not gonna, you know, I think my my first se- like the first season where I like seriously watched like the way I do now was I think the sixteen seventeen Sabers. So I guess I guess dating back to Eichel's rookie season because you know the tank. Seasons. Mm-hmm. They're so long ago at this point. You almost romanticize them. I guess like dating <laughs> yeah. back to all the Eichel years. Like where does where does this one land? I mean, do you want me to take expectations out of the picture, or do you want me to just, just what was base the most en- like of... enjoyability? Enjoyability. Um, well, I definitely rank last season first, and then I'd rank the eleven twelve season after it. Um. Or I'd put those maybe somewhat inter- interchangeable, but I think last season was more exciting because it was a young core and 11 12 was kind of coming, the old core coming to an end. Um, and then you got seasons like 
the 14-15 season, the 17-18 season, and the 2021 season. Those are dead last Think bottom so. of like, the barrel. I feel like, oh I feel my like, god! Yeah. I feel no. I feel like I feel like especially the McDavid year. Like that was so riveting for all the wrong reasons, but like it was still fun. Like I was at that yeah. Blackhawks game where Taves scores those two goals to to uh, you know to take the lead with like a minute left and like the building went nuts. You know they they wanted that to happen. I don't know. That's why I you say know, like I I I would almost avoid ranking those because like you, you you romanticize them to a point. You know were they really fun? You know you got the result you wanted, but I guess you know obviously the end game you ended up with two second overall picks. I don't know. I guess like just if I had, rank rank the, from the first Eichel season. That's where I would say. So from the first Eichel season to the present. Yeah. Okay. So starting at the bottom, the 2020 2021 Sabres just got awful. Not even going to rehash that. Year after that would be the 17 18 season. That's like the forgotten I season. Think, I, I barely like, dude, remember I, it. I feel like I would put that last. Like even the twenty twenty one yeah. Sabers, like first, like no, that, you know, like, there's a there's a period in there where you're laughing because you know they're they're losing fifteen, sixteen, seventeen games in a row, and even the twenty 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 one ended on a decent note. It's still, it's like you lose eighteen games in a row, you tie an F NHL record. I can't overlook that. Um, the seventeen eighteen season was a also a bummer because it was like. I, there were expectations, but they were completely missed. So that team was um, so bad. It was it nobody. Was like, there's something. There's something notable that happens each and every season. Nothing happened that season. That was the season that got Darlene. That's all mm -hmm. that it's known for. And if I was gonna go to the top, it'd be the twenty. It would be last season. Last season would be at the top. Um, and then in the middle, it's kind of like a mix. So like, I'd probably rank this, ah, man. Um, so Eichel's rookie year, I'd probably put maybe like, that's probably up there, upper middle. And then 16, 17, 20, 21, 22. Um, those are probably pretty close to each other. And what am I missing? 18, 19 and 19, 20. How you, grade eight, how you grade 18, 19 is interesting. I think I'd grade both of those kind of together because 18, 19 also was a bummer just because of the way they started and the way they I, finished. I think and it's then more the 19, a bummer. That, that, that season sucked the soul out of me the last three months. That and then the 1920 bad. season was also just, it just seemed like they were spinning their tires coming out of last season up until when COVID hit. At least Eichel was fun. Honestly, this season, it's so sad to say I'd probably put it top three. Dude, no. There's no, 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 no. There's no way. I don't care how much better they were than some of these teams. Oh, dude, I think I put this second last. This what season, season do you, what seasons do you rank above this? Dude, I think I put, man, below this, I would probably put 17, 18. I think 17, 18 is dead last. I think. You dude, cannot I, put this below 2021. That season was fun for like the last month. It what, was at not what, fun what, at, at all. What, at what point did you have fun this season? This team didn't win. They didn't win three games in a row. What, what they won it. They did it once, right? They maybe, did it once. Maybe I'm basing it off too much of none like of the points. Players, none of the top players were good. The best part of this team was the freaking goaltending. You, Jonah, you know what the you know what the great thing about this is? They had a winning record, and they were. Playing so bad, which I think speaks Imagine to how miserable this was. But they didn't. I know, I, but it's 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 just funny. It's I think, I, uh, I think how that works. 17, they actually have a good team, though. Seventeen, eighteen. I think sixteen, seventeen is an underrated bad season because that team was like frustratingly five hundred, like this season. Oh man, it's tough. <laughs> There's been some tough seasons, man. It's so bad. We should put it. We should put something out on Twitter saying, "How would you rank?" From the start of the Eichel era to now, in terms of seasons, we'd yeah. probably get a lot of mixed reviews. But um, I mean, if you wanted to throw the other, how many more tank years were there? It was one, two, it was two, no, two. three. Yeah, it was three. basically. Oh, well, what's the third year? Four. Counting? 
counting four tank years? 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, oh, I mean, I 14, wanna, 15. If you want to put into an era, I guess, yeah. The death of the old core, I guess you could put it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tough. There's Because here's the thing. There's a lot of seasons to rank. And they're not great. No. It's not fun to rank no. those teams. But you know what we can have fun with? This little game. JP was supposed to participate with us, but I don't think he's rejoining us with his uh, his uh, technical difficulties. Broken laptop. And we did play this game we a little play- bit on our lost we, episode. I was going to say, we were playing this game on the lost. We were kind of just tossing it back and forth. Um, you know, you see it sometimes. Jokingly. You see it sometimes, but joking about stuff that happened the last time this team was in the playoffs. And we were doing it last episode kind of off the cuff. And then Christian brought it back, I think, what was it, last night? And we just kept going back and forth. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. We got to do this on the pod. And we have to prepare lists to try and surprise surprise each of us. Because I think it's funny, and I think it's something that doesn't... I think it's, there's some real comedic ability to pull out just how long it's been but i also it's i i opened it up that it's either the last time they played a playoff game or the last time they won a series so you can really really expand here so i'm interested to see what christian came up with the people out there are going to do a little bit of reminiscing if they're listening to this episode of their uh of their younger days um you want to just throw it back and forth so what i have is I have four of them from their golden years, which is it, it includes the 0506 time frame. And then I have four of them from the drought specifically. And then I have one little fun list to rapid fire off at the you're end. Probably, you're, yeah, you're probably, you're, yours is probably going to be a lot better than mine. I'm interested to hear yours. All right. Well, the first one, I'll start with the, um, uh, I'll start with the first era, the, golden years or whatever um i guess this is a this is a broad one but pay phones were still widely available in airports and all over the country to be honest with you on city streets they were still in use what if anyone out there listening to this dm us if you've seen a working pay phone in the last decade there used to be one at the high school we went to like for yes, the longest did. time, yes, but did. that it, it was gone well before I graduated. But that was the last payphone I've ever seen. I don't see them in airports anymore. I don't see them on the streets. I don't see them anywhere. But back when the Sabers, when they were a contender, the last time they were contender, they were everywhere, <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Let that starting one sink off, in. Starting off good. So I had for the last time. They made the playoffs. So that month, April of 2011, Hop was in theaters. The Easter movie? Yes. Oh, my God. It was in theaters. The East Hop, the Easter movie. with What what the hell is that guy's name? James Marston. James Marston, yeah. Oh, my God. Hop. I haven't seen that movie probably since it was in theaters or released uh, on I used DVD. to watch that all the time. Oh, man. That's something you probably need a DVD player for right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, back speaking to you. Of, speaking of um, forms of recording media, still in the golden years, VHS tapes were still the main one, I would say one of... We're still one of the main sources of recording video and audio. VHS tapes. This is 2007. This is 2005 to 2007. VHS tapes. I have not seen a VHS tape since I would watch them at my grandma's house when I was a young little kid, like watching a Disney movie or something. But Or like if there's – no one has a VHS player anymore. So it's like all those old tapes you have. have Do you still have a VHS player? I still still in my my parents' living room. Knowing your dad, he would definitely have a VHS (laughs) player. But good for him. At least he could watch the old stuff. (laughs) All right. Uh, What should I go with here? All right. I'll go with – so in 2011. So right now, uh, in the modern day, for any, for any Pokemon fans out there, right now, right now we're in Generation Nine, and you know these generations, quote unquote, are like three to four years on average. 2011 it was Gen Five. 
We've had four generations take place since then. This is something for JP. I'm not a big Pokemon fan, so I'm not entirely sure. I feel sure. like, so, I hope some people will appreciate it. Because I was wondering, I'm like, because I used to play mm -hmm. those all, I used to always play them back in the day. I'm like, I wonder what, which one I was playing at the time. And you know, I'm in my, you know, in my room, I do have some of my old ones. I wonder if I can go pull them out. They're probably sitting right there. Those things yeah. predate the playoff drought. They, they do. Yeah. And I mean, I guess speaking of Pokemon, um, this would be a, a form of device that you could play a Pokemon game on. Um, and I'll kind of bundle this in with the other one in the, in the year 2006, so the last time the Sabres were a contender and won a playoff game, the Nintendo Wii and Wii Sports has had just dropped. You beat and me. the DS Lite, the DS Lite, which <laughs> I used to play Madden 09 on, just released. You beat me to the one I had. So I had the last time that they won a playoff series in May of 2007. The Nintendo Wii and the PlayStation 3 were less than a year old. It just been released, and the Wii is like dead now. The, sh the oh, yeah. there's like a Wii dead. shop that's been dead for like four years, and I love the Wii. Like that was probably my favorite console growing up. Mm -hmm. But um, this is the last one, and this is probably the one that kind of stings the most out of the '06 era. Mm -hmm. The first generation iPhone ever. The the first gen. This was one of mine. Was released on June 29th of 2007. Yep. Two days before Chris Drury and Daniel Breer left the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. The two days. Time, the last time they Folks, won a playoff series, the iPhone did not exist. Folks, we're on the iPhone 15. Oh my god! This is getting yeah. depressing quick. I guess I'll bundle it with that. Uh, the last time they played a playoff game, the iPhone four was the one in circulation. Uh, that was the old like little box one. Still the home button. Yeah, still. Oh yeah, still the home button. I probably had like an iPod Touch at the time. Maybe not even. I don't even know. But um, how many you got with, left? I got two left. I got and they're four doozies. left. I got four left. I could kind of. I could bundle a couple of them together. So, you know what? Actually, this is what I'll do. I will, th these next three, I'll just list off quick and then I'll, f I'll okay. throw it back to you. Okay. So, this is the drought era. The drought is older than Call of Duty Black Ops 2, all you fans out there. That was, I love that game. Vine, the media sharing platform Vine, lived and died in the drought era. <laughs> And it wasn't even close. Was not even close. It was Vine was around from like 2013 Dude, to 2017. We're dating and, ourselves. And Netflix had just switched from DVDs to streaming in 2011. Oh, oh my god! Oh, just that switched. Hurts. That one hurts. You still had we still had DVDs being delivered to our house to watch movies on Netflix. Oh the last god. time the Sabers were in the playoffs. That's so bad. That's so bad. And you know what? I'm just gonna read off my last one. South Sudan, the country, did not exist the last time the Sabres were in the playoffs in it's 2011. It's a random one. It's a random one. <laughs> they were not a country. They were still, it was still one Sudan. They were not a country yet. Okay. So well, I have I have two. And I'm going to do, I'll do, I'll do the 2011 one first. And I'm proud of this, this, this poll right here because like I had, it was like a thought in my head, but I was like, hmm, I'm just going to go see. And like, it's, it's kind of scary. So the Buffalo Sabres last playoff game was on April 26th, 2011. Two days later, NBC aired the episode Goodbye Michael of The Office. Michael Scott was still on The Office the last time the Sabres played a playoff game. That's Two days. insane. That is insane. Two days. That's impressive. That's a good pull. Good, I know. I was, That's I was a good proud one. of that. I was proud That's of that. That's a good one. one. <laughs> All right. Here's my last one. This one, this one kind of made me go nuts, as you know. The GPS 
did not go mainstream until it was not declared mainstream until December of 2007. People were still using maps on highways the last time they won a playoff series. Those old school maps that you'd have to unfold a thousand times and it'd be like you'd hold it up on your windshield. They were, they were still in use. <laughs> the, the good old paper map. You can't go wrong. Make a right in five finger lengths. There were people driving to Key Bank Center using a foldable map instead of a GPS. Or printed out directions. Oh my God. Which I still remember my parents doing back can, in the can day. I, would you, dude, I still have memories and this these are less than five years ago of my father doing that of printing out like hotel <laughs> hotel directions <laughs> on a piece of paper he's old school and like he owns an iphone <sighs> some oh, some man. things are better done the old way oh man that was All fun right. that was well, fun i have i have one more oh I have you like have a, one more so this is my this is my like little list i made so um these are social trends that have happened throughout the years from the year 2011 to 2023. I didn't include this year because this year's only a third of the way done, a fourth of the way done, whatever. Um so in order, I have one per year from 2011 to 2023. Um so we're going to take a little trip down memory la memory lane. The these are the social trends that have happened throughout the entire Buffalo Sabres drought. Planking, Gangnam Style, Planking. the Harlem Shake, ice, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, the Blue and Gold Dress Debate, Black Beetles Mannequin Challenge, Fidget Spinners, Tide Pods Challenge, Area 51 Raid, Zoom Bombings, Meme Stocks, Will Smith's Oscar Meltdown, and Barbenheimer. Are we old? Yes. Very, I feel very old. A few of those, it's like, oh man, that just, I still remember that vividly. And it's like, the oh, first, yeah. the first one, I don't remember. Well, the actually, the only planking? one I don't remember is planking. Yeah. But planking was a thing. It was like kind of like yes. around the T, remember T Boeing? Yes. I remember T, I could have put T Boeing in that one, but planking, T Boeing, yeah. whatever. The Gangnam style was the first major one I remember. I remember, was that, yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, I remember Gangnam Style. That was 2012. Yeah, I remember that one. That one was everywhere. Mm -hmm. oh, that's when God. like the the real. That's kind of when social media started to take off. So that's when you kind of had yeah. everything yeah, in these, one collective these little, area. These little apps called like Twitter and and mm -hmm. Facebook were beginning to take form. These little startups. The birth of Saber's Twitter, oh, the God. most toxic place on the planet right now. So we do have a list from JP. He sent the. He was going to read these off, mm. um, but now that he can't join us, he did send them to us. So I'll, I'll read them off. So all of these are based on the last Sabres playoff game. The world population was under seven billion. We are now at eight point one billion. Steve Jobs was still the CEO of Apple and still alive. Osama bin Laden was still alive. The last time the Sabres played a playoff game. Tom Brady only had three rings. Office 365 wasn't released yet. Batman Arkham City was one of the most popular games in the world. The Cubs still did not have a World Series. Zach Benson was five years old. And this is, this is for the three of us because we all went to Lancaster High School. But the Lancaster... High school mascot was still the Lancaster Redskins. Gonna have to bleep that word out. When did that change? Like twenty was it? 2015? 2014, I think. 2014. Man. It was the year before I went into high school. So 2014. God, it seems so long ago now. Oh my like god, this could, this could... drought is too long. I remember dude, I remember thinking to myself, I think um I remember walking through the halls of Lancaster High School and like before I was a student there and they have like for anybody who went there just to describe it like they have the class like each senior class and they'll have their names all bunched together in like this nice little artwork with like the year so like you know the year of 2018 or 
whatever, all the names are there. And I remember walking through the school back in like 20, I don't know, 15 or 16, and seeing the names for like 2005, 2006, and I'm like, oh, dude, that must have been so cool. Your senior year of high school, you got to witness some of like the greatest runs in the franchise's history. I can't wait till like I'm a senior or I can't wait till I'm in high school and I get to experience like all of these, you know, these playoff runs. You poor it's like, fool. I was like, I was so naive. Like Eichel and Reinhardt were just on the up and up. Oh my you, God. You could have been, you could have been in the interstellar meme. If you could go back, <laughs> that would be you banging on that bookshelf. Like, I, just like yelling. I, vivid, like I vividly remember walking through thinking that to myself, like that must've been like, could you imagine, could you imagine graduating high school in like, june of 2005 or, or uh, june of 2006 yeah if you're a senior in high school and you get to witness like the most beloved playoff run ever it seems like you know like looking back on that era like the mid 2000s we've already gone through it in the list but like dude so much has changed like just in the world like technology from then to now was so primitive there were no there were no like FaceTimes. There was barely like texting. It was all like T9 word where you'd have to click the key five times to get the right letter. That wasn't even like widely available. Like it was all plastic keyboards and stuff. It's just so weird to like, it wasn't even 20 years ago, but also it's kind it's of a long weird. time in but the I grand think, scheme of things. Cause I think you know, this is getting very off topic from like Saber stuff, but yeah, like, who cares? but like, I feel like we're like the last, like our age group, like we grew up like every adult grew up. Like we had normal childhood, no phones. I mean, I think what I had like an iPod when I was mm. maybe 10, 11 years old, but I didn't get my first phone till I was going into middle school, which I think it made sense. Like, you know, it's kind of more, it's kind of like your first grown up years. So like from the, period I was born. So like I was 13 years old, I grew up the same as everyone experienced the same technology, the same old school type of living. If you want to call it that. Dude, I didn't get my first phone until I was in eighth grade and I had to beg for it when I was in seventh grade and I'd have to call home. I'd have to go to the office and use the wall phone. You just see you walk in for like the thousands. Yeah, oh, I know the, the office ladies are like, yeah, you could use the phone. Right. I'm like, God damn it. Speed dials on too. You can call your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just yeah. no, oh I remember, God, I remember awful. calling the office, like from the office, like there's probably kids in like, you know, four, fifth grade. They all got, they probably got phones too. Like it's, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. Some days I wish I can go back. Yeah. It seems like a simpler time. Then you realize you're like a slave to your device. Exactly. Yeah. I can't go like five minutes without looking at my phone now. But eh, times are different now. You got to be now? adaptable, right? Life goes on. As the Sabres should be this offseason, they need to be adaptable and they need to bring in some heavy hitters. What a segue. Yeah, I think we've kind of rambled on here enough. Uh, kind of went a bit existential here, but... Mm. T today was a good day for the Sabres, and I think that's kind of what's important. Yes. You know, it sucks. You never want to see someone losing their job. Um, you know, I really, I really wanted it. I really wanted Don Granado to work out here, and for a little bit, I thought he, I thought he would. Mm -hmm. But time came. The team didn't perform this season. A lot of regression happened. Someone had to answer for it, and unfortunately, the Don Granado era of Sabres hockey is over. And we will see who gets to lead the Sabres next and try to end this godforsaken drought. Please. Just please. Someone help us out, man. <laughs> Don't make me beg. Nah, we'll we'll be okay. Just knowing that the last two seasons, I mean, we've been above 500. That hasn't happened in over a decade. And the vast underperforming of this season and we still finish two games above 500 just just shows that with the right coach and the right i i want to say retool but it's got to be a good re a decent retool it can't be little tweaks like last off season we're there and i think we could be competitive i think so. it shows it's not that hard no it's not like 
It really I know, isn't. I know, like, a, a big chunk of the season is owed to, like, Uko Pekalukinen, but it, like, it's, it's not that hard to make the playoffs. I and mean, as, as a fan of a team that's in a 13 year drought, that might seem a bit of an ironic statement, but, like, it's not, like, this season stunk the, for, the like, the Capitals six went kicking and straight. Stre- and you wake up in mid March and you're like, there's going to be a point out of a playoff spot today. It's like, the Capitals, it's a long, dude. They it's went a long kicking season. and screaming. It's a long season, and it just takes – like, bad teams get into the playoffs. Look at this year. Even, like, the Islanders last year. Like, I don't know. It's sickening. I, I hate it. I hate that we don't get another – we don't get Sabres hockey for another five months. This next season doesn't kick off for another six. It sucks. It's a – very bad feeling, but it really like they're close. And I know it's for some people, it's not going to be very reassuring. And even myself, like I want to be more than close. I want to be in, I want to be, I mean, ideally next year you're doing damage. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see how the, the off season progresses. We'll see what they do with this team. We'll see what road they take and we'll see how they respond to, Probably the most disappointing season of the drought. Uh, based on expectations, yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, probably. But until next time, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for another season of listening. Yes. Uh, you know, we picked up, uh, surprisingly, we picked up a lot of new listeners. Um, we're very grateful. We've come such a long way and such a short amount of time, just two short seasons. and Damn, it's already been two seasons. Isn't it crazy? It's going to be two years in a few months. Damn. I still remember wow. recording that first episode. Yeah, at, uh, at at UB. At, yep. We were all professional trying to rent out the... We're like, we gotta get, we got to get a studio. We got to get... Yeah. <laughs> now look at us. Now we're just on Zoom. Two idiots it's a turning lot on their... Yeah, two idiots turning on their, their cameras in their bedrooms. But, you know... Uh, I'm extremely grateful for anyone who's listening out there and anyone who, you know, follows us throughout the season. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Jonah. He does a lot of the editing Ah, work and content and he does all the graphics, man. I just kind of, I try and bring some comedic elements to the scene, but much uh, needed. Yeah. Occasionally, but um, I'm, I'm extremely happy to be a part of this brand and i love covering this team and i'm looking forward to the next however many seasons we're doing this so thanks for sticking with us thanks for listening to us we appreciate it more than you guys know and you know go sabers yeah it's a good way to put it so as christian said thank you so much um if you like the show tell your friends tell your family tell whoever you want You know, we really enjoy it. We love the feedback. We love, you know, in just such a short time, we got people asking us when the next episode is coming out. And even just like that small little Mm -hmm. boost, like it just, it, it really does mean the world and makes you that much more motivated to, to talk about a very frustrating, frustrating hockey team. So thank you. Uh, Much love coming from our end to you. Thank you for another great season of Sabres hockey And here's to hopefully a better one in the near future. But I think with that, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can follow us at at the Saber Report. Follow us on Instagram at at the Saber Report. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on TikTok. If you want updates for the pod, follow us at at Saber Report Pod. Go give our friends over at the Buffalo Sports Talk Podcast a listen. The NFL Draft is coming up, and they've been doing some great stuff over there. Oh, yeah. But other than that, once again, thank you, everybody. Take care. Feel free to leave a review and go Sabres. Closer than you think, Sabres fans. Until next time.